I didn't expect to come back this quick because I feel like I've been spoiling y'all too much. I don't want y'all to think that every week for the rest of the year that I'm going to be doing like five to six videos a week every week. I don't want y'all to think that. So scratch that. Even though I know since I switched to my new format, I've been putting up a lot of content. But I'm not going to be doing this every single week for the rest of the year. Uh-oh. I hate to do this on camera, but my nose is itching. Makes me think I got, you know. Here's what I'm going to stop doing. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to stop doing. Is stop making declarations of what I'm not going to do and then turn around and do it. Because, again, it's probably the third time I mentioned this. I said when I switched to my new format, See, here's the thing. I have a lot of followers, supporters, clients who will constantly send me stuff. Two-thirds of it, I don't like it. I'll be honest. I don't like it. Like, And I mentioned that in a previous video. I don't like, for example, when people send me stuff like, hey, I heard this other dating coach, dating coach XYZ, he said this, which is different from what you said. What do you think, Alan? I don't like those type of questions. My attitude is, that dating coach is that dating coach. I am who I am. We're two different people. And just generally, you know, my last video was related to me responding to something that three brothers who mentioned my name on a live stream, I'm not going to say the name, but it was three brothers on a live stream that mentioned my name in different ways at different points in the live stream. Speaking of... Yesterday's video, man, I got to quickly say, my, my, my brother, you know how my relationship is with my brother, man. There's some videos I do, he gives me a thumbs up, five stars. Other videos I do, he, he he's like thumbs down. He don't like them. He knows I'm a grown man. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. But there's just some videos of mine, quite frankly, he doesn't like. And he'll let me know that for whatever it's worth. Two general types of videos my brother doesn't like. Videos where he feels like I use a gratuitous amount of profanity he doesn't like, a gratuitous amount of X-rated, triple X-rated, sexually explicit language, and third, videos where he feels like I'm just too hardcore real, too hardcore real. And what most of my followers would call me going into beast mode or savage beast mode. Like I saw people write that in the comment section of my last video. They said, oh shit, ARC's in savage beast mode. He don't like those videos. Again, he knows I'm a grown ass man. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. But, you know, he'll let me know. Yeah, he wrote me. He, he specifically didn't like how many times I used the N word. How many times I used the N word. He hates that word. Now, if you notice, I used it in two regards. There's two variations of the N word. There's nigga and nigger. N-I-G-G-A and N-I-G-G-E-R. Now, I will openly admit, I hate N-I-G-G-E-R. I despise that word, particularly if it comes out of the mouth of a non-black person. I do not like N-I-G-G-E-R. N-I-G-G-A, I'll openly admit, I use that sometimes liberally and loosely. Because that sometimes can be a term of endearment. That's like you saying, that's my dog. You know, you say, oh, Jay Smooth, I went to high school with? That's my nigga, man. That's my nigga. See, it's not disparaging the way I'm saying that. That's my nigga. That's like saying, that's my boy. That's my ace. That's my, that's my dude. So sometimes, yeah, I will, instead of saying like brothers, I'll say B. That's another thing. I have two variations of brothers. I pointed this out in the video before. There's B-R-O-T-H-E-R-S, brothers, and then B-R-U-T-H-A-S. Some guys spell it B-R-O-T-H-A-S. When I say B-R-U-T-H-A-S, I'm talking about specifically black men. Black men. So if I say, yeah, man, I was at this party, there was nothing but brothers there. I'm saying there was nothing but black men there. On the other hand, if I say brother, I could be talking about a non-black person. Like there's some non-black people that I'm really cool with. And I might say, hey, you know, Andy Wachowski, I'm making up a name. Andy Wachowski, who might be, I don't know, a white dude. I might say, Andy Wachowski, man, me and him so close, man, that's my brother. That's my brother, you know. So, yeah, when I'm saying B-R-O-T-H-E-R-S, that could be a man of any race. That means I'm just so close to him, I feel like they're my brother from another mother. Whereas when I say brother, with that T-H-A, brother, I'm talking about black men. 
Anyway, yeah, my brother, he didn't like the uh, use of the N-word. But anyway, here's where I want to get to the point. Here's, here's the deal. A follow of mine sent me a clip of all people from my man O'Shea Duke Jackson. Now, everybody know I got a lot of love and respect for O'Shea Duke Jackson. He's the editor-in-chief of the Negro Manosphere. And as most of you know, you probably haven't seen an article from me on the Negro Manosphere. I'll go ahead and let you know publicly. O'Shea has known this for a couple months now. For the most part, I'm not writing for the Negro Manosphere anymore. At least not, I would say, at least not on a week-to-week -week basis. What I basically informed, I informed O'Shea about roughly two months ago that I no longer wanted to be obligated to write for the Negro Manosphere on a steady week-to-week -week basis. Because I just, I'm doing just too much traveling. Got a lot of things going on. You know, I didn't want to be late. Because the last few times I did write an article, I was damn, I was almost late. You know, and I don't like to be late on articles. Um, so I just told him I would rather have the freedom to contribute to a site when I have a lot of free time and when I really have something juicy to write. So I'm going to be like what's known as a special feature, special contributor to the Negro Manosphere, as opposed to a week-to-week -week columnist. I'm going to be a special contributor to the Negro Manosphere. Um... But anyway, somebody sent me a clip. Man, a lot of what O'Shea, I, me and O'Shea have disagreed before, so this won't be the first time I've disagreed with something O'Shea said. But he also says a lot of stuff I agree with. But on this clip, O'Shea made a comment, kind of half lighthearted, half serious. He made the comment that all dating is tricking. All dating is tricking. And he basically went on to say, I don't care how you measure it, you're going to pay for pussy some kind of way. You're going to pay for pussy some kind of way. With all due respect, O.J. Duke Jackson, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that assessment. And I, I've actually mentioned that on a few videos before. I don't agree with that. I would not say that all dating is representative of tricking. And I, and I wouldn't say that all men are going to end up in one way or fashion. Here's the thing. First of all, I'll start off with the first fact of the matter. Not all forms of what's known as pay for play can be categorized as tricking. Not all forms of pay for play can be categorized as tricky. If you remember when I going back to my four, remember I talked about the four roles women are going to choose you for? I said the casual fuck buddy role, the long term romantic companion slash future spouse role. One of them was pay for play role, pay for play role. And I said that which includes tricking, sh tricks and sugar daddies. I said that includes tricks and sugar daddies. Then I said the purely platonic friend role. See, there's three general forms of what's known as pay for play. That's what a lot of women will call it. Pay for play, meaning you're exchanging some form. Okay, this also goes back to another article. Speaking of Negro Manister, I wrote an article. I basically said there's five general ways you can get a woman in bed. Five general ways you get a woman in bed. Like a lot of people want to act like there's only one way to get a woman in bed. No, there's five general ways to get a woman in bed. And to give you a refresher, here are the five general ways to get a woman in bed. Number one, attraction. Attraction. In simple terms, if you're getting a woman in bed, that relates to my concept of mode zero. Mode zero. If you go to a party and three women approach you, not you approaching them, they approach you, initiate a conversation with you and they pretty much let you know one way or the other that they want to give you some pussy simply because they find you so physically attractive, so sexually appealing that you really don't have to have no money. You don't have to have no strong verbal game. You pretty much can just get pussy just on literally just on your looks and sex appeal. That's attraction. That's attraction. That means you're getting women in bed based on attraction. The next form of getting a woman in bed would be 
seduction. Seduction. The main component of seduction is persuasion. Persuasive charm and influence. Persuasive. When is seduction necessary? Is when, let's say you meet a woman and she does have some degree of attraction to you, but when it comes to the type, the type of sex you two are looking for, y'all not on the same page. For example, she might be makes it known that she's looking for long-term sexual companionship and you're looking for short-term sexual companionship. Or she lets it be known she's looking for strictly monogamous sexual companionship and you're looking for non-monogamous sexual companionship. That's where seduction comes into play. If, I, if I'm talking to a woman that, that makes it known that she's looking for long-term sex and I'm looking for short-term sex, then I have to persuade her to see things my way. If she's looking for monogamous sex and I'm looking for non-monogamous sex, I have to persuade her to see things my way. That's where seduction comes into play. Third is dishonesty and manipulation. Dishonesty and manipulation. I'll use the same analogy I just used. Let's say I meet a woman and her interest is long-term sex and my interest is short-term sex. Instead of trying to persuade her, what I'll do is just simply say, well, yeah, I'm looking for long-term sex too. And then after I fuck her two times, five times, ten times, I'll just dump her and leave her alone. That's dishonesty and manipulation. Or similarly, a woman lets me know she wants strictly monogamous sex, but I know I want non-monogamous sex. Instead of trying to persuade her to see things my way, I simply say, oh yeah, that's what I want too, strictly monogamous sex. Then I fuck her two times, five times, ten times, and then I dump her. That's dishonesty and manipulation, or what alpha male strategies would call sleazeball game. Sleazeball game. Fourth me general method of getting a woman in bed, and that's relates to this video I'm doing right now, Financial negotiation, or informally, pay for play. Financial negotiation, or pay for play. I'll get to that in a second. Then the fifth, and the most probably despicable, is coercion. Coercion is various forms of sexual assault, such as rape, date rape, kidnapping a woman and forcing her to have sex with you, getting a woman sloppy drunk and taking advantage of her, or giving her date rape drugs and taking advantage of her, all of that would fall in the category of coercion. That's the most unacceptable, immoral, unethical, despicable way of having sex with a woman. But the reality is a lot of men indulge in that method. So that's the five methods. I know this is going to go more than 20 minutes. I know a lot of people have been teasing me. They say, Alan, when you first switched to your new format, you said all your videos would be roughly between 15 and 19 minutes, 15 and 19 minutes. But I think I've had two or three videos already that have gone 20 minutes or longer. This is probably going to go 20 minutes or longer before I go into my Patreon exclusive portion. But pay for play. There's three forms of pay for play. Three general forms of pay for play. There is tricking, whining and dining, and long-term financial provision. Tricking Whining and dining and long-term financial provision. Those are the three general forms of pay for play. Here's a brief description of each one. What is tricking? Tricking, the formal term for tricking is solicitation for prostitution. That's the formal term for it, solicitation for prostitution. Here's when you, you can qualify your pay for play method as tricking. Not only when you're spending money on a woman for sex, but spe more specifically, you're spending money on a woman for the opportunity to have sex with her without, without spending any significant amount of time with her non-sexually. You're spending money on her for a sexual companionship and also you're spending money on her to, to be allowed to not feel obligated to spend any time with her non-sexually. That's tricky. So the simple example of tricking is, if I meet a woman named Lisa, 
And I say, hey, Lisa, I really don't want to take you out on no date. I really don't want to walk in the park with you. I don't really want to spend a bunch of hours, weeks getting to know you before we fuck. Why don't I just give you $150, we fuck for the next two to three hours, and then we just never see each other again. And let's say she says, okay, <laughs> that's tricky. That's tricky. That's the basic general definition of tricky. It is when you're, in, you're not only presenting money to a woman, but you're specifically letting it be known in one way or another that, hey, I don't want to spend no time with you non-sexually. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking to you on the phone. I don't want to spend no time, a lot of time hanging out with you, going on two, three, four, five dates with you, all that bullshit. Check it out. I'll give you $150, $200. We'll fuck for the next two to three hours. And then after we finish fucking, you go your way, I go my way, and I might call you up two weeks two weeks from now, three weeks from now, and offer you the same deal. And she says, okay, <laughs> that's tricky. Here's the main problem why I've always had criticism of tricking. If nothing else, if nothing else, is that technically, technically, tricking is illegal. I always have to point that out. Tricking is illegal. You can actually go to jail for tricking. I've had, I've known guys personally, dudes I know personally, who had their picture put in the paper because they got caught tricking. Yeah, because technically tricking is a form of solicitation for prostitution. Now, most men know how to circumvent it, circumvent the legalities of it so that they don't get arrested. But you always run the risk of getting, you can get, you can go to jail and, and, and most embarrassing thing that can, that can happen, you can uh, look at Greg Anthony. He's an NBA analyst. He got busted for tricking because he tried to, he was tricking with some babe on the old site called Backpage.com. So that's tricking. Now the next one, whining and dining. Whining and dining. Whining and dining is similar to tricking, a little different. Whining and dining is what sugar daddies do. And I was just talking about legalities. In the same way tricking is illegal, whining and dining is legal. Whining and dining is when you're paying, spending money on a woman for her non-sexual companionship. You're actually spending money on a woman for her non-sexual companionship. And you just confidently expect, you confidently expect that she's going to reward you with access also to her sexual companionship even though she's not obligated to. She's not legally obligated to. You're spending money on her for her non-sexual companionship and you confidently expect that she's going to also grant you access to her sexual companionship. That is known as whining and dining. My frat brothers, we used to call that ice creaming. Ice creaming. Then... Third and final form of pay for play, pay for play is what's known as long-term financial provision. Long-term financial provision. That could also include sugar daddies. There are a lot of sugar daddies who not only do short-term financial provision, but they do long-term financial provision. Some BDSM cuckolds do long-term financial provision. A lot of married men. A lot of married men. Marriage is a form of long-term financial provision. If you, if you propose marriage to a woman and she lets you know that the only way I'm marrying you is if you're going to take care of all my bills, all the expenses of our children, and if you somehow get unemployed or run into financial problems, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to let you know. I'm going to divorce you. I'm going to leave you. And you say, okay then that means you are a long-term financial provider. It could be in the form of a sugar daddy or it could be in the form of a husband. That's long-term financial provision. That's the third and final form of pay for play. Okay, get it? Got it good. I don't want this to be too long. Um, here's my, my main assertion. Not all men, not all men have to in, in, engage in any of those three. 
Not all men have to engage in any of those three, including myself. I can name many instances where I did not trick, I did not wine and dine, or I did not offer long-term financial provision, and I still got the pussy. And that's what I'm about to break down in the Patreon exclusive portion.